Hey everybody, as we promised in our last video, today we're going to show you how to make a really cool poster style fine art print of this image from our last shoot using my absolutely favorite printer in the world, the Canon Image Prograph Pro 1000, which is a fantastic printer. Let's go. Okay, a few quick words about this printer um, and why it's my favorite printer of pretty much all time. I do have uh, three printers. We've got three printers that we use here and in the studio. We've got one of the large format printers in the studio and we have two desktop printers here. One is one of the A3 Plus ones. It's actually the, actually the Pixma Pro 1, which is now discontinued. And this is the new top of the lane range. It kind of sits on top of the Pixma range and just at the, entrance to the ProGraph IPF printer range, um, which are the large, large format printers, but it is a phenomenal printer. The color gradations on this printer and the sharpness and resolution are phenomenal, okay? Um, and also the accuracy of colors. I mean, you can always be printing away and perfectly happy, thinking you've got a really accurate setup and your workflow could be really accurate but you're, there's always that level of better printers and better tools, better technology will always just interpret that ever so slightly more accurately. Now, I was previously printing on what would have been considered the best desktop printers um, for photography in the industry many years ago, maybe six or seven years ago. Um, and at that point, I tested one of the Pixma Pro printers, the new Pixma Pro range, and it was actually the Pixma Pro 100. That has since been upgraded to the Pixma Pro 100S, but even the Pixma Pro 100, which is a few tiers down in the range from this, was a phenomenal printer. And to me, it just had that extra edge in terms of tonal gradations, color gradations. Um, it really brought out the smoothness in the colors and in the contrast in the actual images a, that little bit better. And you don't realize that you can get that little bit better until you see it. And that's what happened with me. And, you know, these printers just were a step above everything else that was there and still are a step above, in my opinion, everything else that's there at the moment. Um, and I went from a professional level des desktop inkjet printer to using, you know, just testing the Pixma Pro 100 and it was day and night better. Just that extra little bit more accuracy, getting the extra little bit of gradation out of the colors, there was just, there's nothing like it. And this is the, the top printer in that range at the moment, so you can imagine uh, when I first test, tested this how happy I was. If you don't get this, because this is an A2 printer, okay? Not everybody has room for an A2 printer. If you don't get this and you want one of the A3 Plus printers, or, you know, are you going to be disappointed? Is, is there a big difference in quality? No, there are differences between them, but they are all phenomenal, okay? And I don't think there's anything out there that can touch them. So the reason I use this printer a lot is because it gives me the great flexibility of size, the large ink cartridges, um, you know, high capacity cartridges, they're 80 mil, I think, in this. It's more economical and efficient to print, even if you're printing A3 on an A2 printer. It's more economical to print on a large printer. Um, you just get more, you know, more ink per percent or per penny or whatever, okay? So, yeah, that's pretty much that. We're going to switch over to a screen recording now, and we are going to first print this image. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so... Here I am at my MacBook, and this is where I always start um, when I go to print. For me, printing is always done from Bridge. I do all my image management from Bridge. I'm not a big Lightroom fan. I use Lightroom a lot um, for tethering because it's really cool for if you're shooting in the studio and tethering, and you know it's also useful to be able to print directly from. So I just find Lightroom really useful for that. But when it comes to editing images or printing and browsing, I just find Bridge so much faster. I manage the files manually, locations, everything. I manage all that manually myself. Um, I don't like 
software that uses libraries. No offense, I mean, Lightroom is great. No issues with it. This just suits me um, much better. So I start with everything in Bridge, whether I'm going to edit raw files and edit them in Adobe Camera Raw, or whether I'm going to print final images like we're going to do here. Now these images, you can see I've got images at the bottom of the screen here. One, two, three, four, five. These are high-res JPEG exports. They're JPEGs just for convenience of printing for the demo today and for speed of being able to use them and manage them. I would often, you know, export my images as PSDs, um, you know, or something like that, which wouldn't ha have a loss of quality involved. But first generation JPEGs at quality 12 are incredible quality. It's, you know, I defy uh, in most situations, anybody who says they can see a difference. Okay, so let's get into the printing. We're not going to do a really detailed printing workshop today, but what we are going to do is just run through the basic steps for what I would do to print an image like this, okay? Okay, so the first thing we need to do is just have the printer ready and make sure it's not gone to sleep because they can go on standby when they're sitting there for a while to save power, etc. Um, and we're going to get a sheet of paper. You're noticing I'm wearing my glasses now because <laughs> um, it's getting to that stage where I need my reading glasses for the, the computer work. So for this image, I think a classic photographic look, which would be somewhere between a poster and almost like a portfolio image. Um, you know, classic fashion portfolio from back in the day maybe. I really like some of those commercial printed looks. So um, what I'm going to use is I'm going to print it on this, which is one of my favorite non-matte papers. It's fiber-based gold silk, okay? It's a really cool traditional barita style paper and it, it gives that look and feel of tra traditional darkroom photography. It's great on monochrome images and I find it fantastic on color images as well. So we'll take a sheet. Okay, bear in mind. So that's the back. This is the printable surface. So it's, it was facing upwards like that in the box, okay? And that's the way you load it into the printer then, facing, you know, forward from the printer, okay? So we're putting it into the rear tray. There are guides here that widen out and then you close them in until they touch the paper so that the paper will feed straight. There was a time that you had to like uncurl fiber-based papers and things like this, but these papers are fantastic. They stay fairly flat. There are many reasons I use the Permajet range of papers, but this is just another one. Permajet has always been ahead of the curve on a lot of this stuff. And also this printer, the Canon printers, they load paper phenomenally easily. So there's usually no issue with anything like that, curling or you know problems with thick papers. You can adjust the settings for thickness in the printer for custom papers or for really thick papers, but we don't need to for this, okay? So the next thing I do is I'm double clicking one of the images so that it will open in Photoshop. Now this image, I have already sized to 10 by 15 because I'm gonna print this at 10 by 15 inches with a border, okay? On an A3 sheet of paper. So, that gives it a nice kind of clean look to the edges. I remember when borderless printing first became a thing, everybody wanted to print everything borderless, but I've kind of gone back a lot to printing with a border, with an edge now. Um, and I think it looks really slick and nice. If you're making limited editions, you could always sign and number the borders as well. So get rid of this message. It just means I'm using an old graphics setup on the machine, but that doesn't matter. So the first thing I do, this has been exported from Camera Raw. So the first thing I do is I'm gonna zoom in because I can see a dust spot here, okay? which I have not taken care of. And I'm going to use my spot heal tool and just get rid of that. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is just take a look at the sharpness. The image was shot on the 5DSR um, and it was shot using fairly sharp glass, so it should be plenty sharp for this. I do use a little output sharpening in 
the raw converter. Yeah, this is plenty share for me, even at 33.33%. There is a myth that you have to always zoom into 100% to assess your sharpness. Really, you should be going to the size you're going to print at and a little bigger. On this monitor, 25% is roughly the size it will print at a 10 by 15 inch image, okay? So when I zoom into 33% there, I can see really clearly if there are any sharpness issues, okay? So it is sharp enough. I don't need to apply any more sharpening, but I am going to take a look at the black and white point so to do that, I'm going to click this little icon here to add adjustment layers, and I'm going to take a look at levels. Okay, it's a dark image. I want a lot of deep saturated reds, and you can see that's represented here, and the blacks are on the left. Okay, so I want to see what's going black. Okay, you can see some areas in the shadow of the hands, fingers, just the darkest parts are going black, and some of the reds are going deep, but not quite black. And I want to see what's white. So just like I did with the black, if I click on the white slider and then hold the Alt key, it will show me if there is any white. Now be careful, because at this view on screen, you don't see any really white pixels, okay? But if we zoom in, so hold the Z key and just zoom in with the mouse. If we zoom in, You can see there are a few pixels there, like the earring and the top left horn here, where you're getting some clipping. And you can see more of them here. For the best prints, I find you don't want too much white. So if I hold down the Alt key and drag this in, you'll see that a lot of the skin starts to go completely white the minute I bring it in. So I'm going to leave it as is. I want that soft, moody feel to that image. Not soft in terms of sharpness or contrast, but I want the tones to be smooth and soft as they grade between highlight, mid-tone and shadow. Okay? I don't want any really strongly clipped highlights if I can avoid them but I can see that I'm getting as many tones in that image as I possibly can without clipping the highlights. We could lighten the mid-tones if we wanted, but that would take away the mood, as you can see here, okay? I mean, that just kills the image and it becomes like a glamour photo. So putting the mid-tones back to one takes care of that, okay? Okay, so back into my layers palette and in my layers palette, I'm going to just, you know, get rid of that. We don't need the adjustment. I think it's fine. So the next thing is actually putting it through the printer. I'm a bit of an old fashioned kind of guy that way. I like to do everything manually. I manage my own workflow. I don't use a lot of printing plugins or anything like this. On the large format printer, I do use the print plugin for that printer purely because it helps manage the paper sizes better. But for any other situations, I just do it the old fashioned way, using the printer driver as found in Photoshop by going file print, okay? Now this is the Photoshop output page that comes up. And this is, you know, where you make sure that your printer is selected correctly. Now, this says Canon Pro 1000 Series 12. Ignore that. I just use so many different printers when I do print workshops. 90% of the time, if I travel to clubs, associations, or any groups or events, and I give a print demo or print workshop, 90% of the time, it will be this printer anyway. But I've set up drivers so many times for demonstration purposes that you can see it's been loaded here at least 12 times, okay? But ignore that. So it's set to portrait orientation because it's a portrait image, okay? Now, one thing I just wanna show you first is the image size, okay? If we go up to the image menu and then click image size, this is where we set the size of the print. I tend to not resample down, as you can see here, okay? I wanna print at 10 by 15, so I have changed this to 10 and this 
by 15 in terms of inches, okay? And it's original size because I've already sized this, this image resized, but if we go to 300 PPI, for example, okay? We'll see that the original file from the 5DSR was 19.3 by 28.96 inches, okay? When I resized that down, I selected inches here, and I'll change the width to 10, because I want to print it at 10 by 15 in the center of an A3 page. Because I have this linked here, this automatically changes to 15, and because I don't have resample ticked, it keeps all of my pixels, okay? I don't tend to resample down. Most printers can handle much more than this kind of resolution, all right? So, um, I don't think there's an issue to it. And when you do go resampling, you run the risk of highlighting any sharpening artifacts that you may have. Whereas by, you know, trying to keep all the pixels, you tend to not artificially create artifacts at this stage or um, create the potential that they'll happen in the printer. I've tested it both ways and I always find a smoother result this way with maximum sharpness, okay? So, if I had just resized that now, I would click OK, but because it's already been done, I'm going to click Cancel, OK? The next thing is I've checked my white and black points. I've taken a look at the contrast by using the, the histogram in the levels adjustment layer. The reason that's useful, folks, is because you could be printing somewhere where you don't normally edit and your monitor might not be calibrated for that particular environment. And it's a good final check to make sure you can kind of preempt what your image is going to look like. If your image, if your monitor is showing you, if you're in a darker than normal environment and your monitor is showing you an image that's much brighter than it really is, you will end up with a darker print and you will be disappointed. The same happens the other way around. If your monitor is, you know, in a very bright room and it's appearing to your eye darker than it normally should be, the print will be brighter than you expect. So by looking at the histogram, that's how you can see the tones you can expect to have in the image. And as you saw, it was showing me a moody image with a little highlight, but not a whole lot, okay? And that's what I want for this shot. There are many myths on the internet about getting the perfect bell curve histogram. That's only useful for the perfect bell curve average contrast scene. Um, it doesn't exist all the time, okay? So, let's quickly print. So file, we've put a sheet of paper in the printer. I'm making sure the printer's not gone to sleep because I talk a lot. File, print. And when the output page opens here, we're going to make sure that Photoshop manages colors is selected, okay? This is old school methodology here. We're not using any um, you know, add-on software or plugins or software in the printer to do any kind of translation of colors or anything, we're going to manually match a profile, okay? So Photoshop manages colors and the profile that has been picked is Permajet's fiber-based gold silk, gold silk <laughs> paper. The right-hand side, the last four letters here, they tell you what media type to select in your um, printer driver afterwards. So, um, you will see a sheet that comes with the paper might often give you a slightly different one depending on when you got the driver because the drivers get updated over time etc. Um, so we'll worry about that in, in the next step. Okay. Always pick perceptual. In my opinion it's it's obviously the one that it tries to translate what you're seeing into a print rather than trying to translate colors in a mathematical way and what you're seeing is what you want to reproduce okay and if you have black point compensation tick it depending on the printer you're running this may not be there on some printers it's visible on 32-bit operating systems and not on 64 so just if it's there tick it okay that means it'll keep the transition to black consistent on the new medium so shadow tones will transition to black at the same point as they do in your original file, okay? Which is what you want. So the next thing we do is click print settings and we'll make sure that all the stuff in the driver 
is picked correctly, okay? I've selected A3 borderless, even though I'm leaving a gap on the page, borderless will put the optimizer over the whole thing. But also, if you want to make a smaller margin, you don't want to run into a situation where some of your image won't fit on, on, on the, the margin on the paper, okay? So, um, the printable area will determine that, but that's a, a conversation for another day. But for now, we're gonna pick A3 borderless, and we're gonna make sure in layout, there's again, nothing here that we need to change. It's not clicked to reverse orientation or flip horizontally or anything. So then we will pick color matching and make sure that that's showing us switched off because we're using Apple's color sync because we've selected the paper profile. The Photoshop is managing colors. This would be if the printer is man managing colors, okay? You could click Canon color matching, but we're not going there. This is old school. So we've picked the paper size, A3 borderless. The next thing we go to is um, paper handling to make sure there's nothing ticked, like if scale to fit paper size was ticked, that would all of a sudden scale the image up. We don't wanna do that. We wanna keep it to the size we've picked, we've set it to in Photoshop. Then we pick quality and media. Photo paper plus semi-gloss, okay? That's the best media type for this particular uh, permajet paper, okay? Um, you could pick, where are we now? You know, you could pick any of the semi-gloss. You could pick Pro Luster and you'll find it doesn't make much difference. In this section, people confuse this section to the profiles, okay? A lot of these particular selections that are very similar to each other tend to do the same thing, okay? There are differences, don't get me wrong, I'm just saying that you won't get a huge um, problem if you pick the, you know, the wrong one in the correct category. But if you picked, say, you know, if you're printing on a, a semi-gloss or a silk paper like this one, and you pick a matte paper media type in here, it will completely mess up your print. You know, you'll find that when you, if you print on a matte paper, but you pick a gloss or satin media type, it will become mud city, okay? The ink will be very wet on the paper, it'll take ages to dry. These sections, these media types, really tell the printer how heavy a layer of ink to put down, which black to use, because there are multiple blacks in, in these printers, and also, um, you know, how much black to put down, okay? So that's the big uh, difference with these. And sometimes people forget these and the wrong one is selected and um, you know, it will completely mess up your print if you, have some, if you pick one that's vastly different, okay? Now we'll go through these maybe another day because it's, it's a good idea to see the differences. But for this paper, in this printer, this is the one that translates best. Now, the rare tray is selected, which is this one. There is another tray at the very back. That's not the rare tray. This is the rare tray. The one at the back is the manual feed. They're both, at, they're both at the back, so technically they're both rare trays, but this one is on top at the back, okay? And print quality, look, you could pick highest. You know, I'm just gonna pick standard. It'll print amazingly with standard, okay? You know, you would be hard pushed to see the difference with the sharp image between either of those two anyway but I'm gonna pick standard just for the speed of printing for demo purposes, all right? That's pretty much everything. So we've selected everything that we need to select and we've checked everything that we need to check. I'm gonna just make sure that the, just making sure there that the printer hasn't gone to sleep and saved too much energy. Um, and then I just click save. And the next thing we click is print, okay? A lot of the work in making a print is done at the point where you edit the image, okay? It's already, you know, your tones and contrast are already set, your amount of shadow, highlight, that's already set. So an in-depth printing video is probably something we'll do another day. The next video we're gonna do, just to give the heads up, is we'll be heading to, actually to Permajet HQ in England, uh, because I have found, I've been asking to get a look at, I wanna do a video kind of talking about the different Canon desktop printers, and the guys at Permajet have told me they've got them there in stock, so I can actually get them and, and have a quick look and talk about them um, in a video. So that might be useful for you folks. So I'm looking forward to that. And then later we'll do an in-depth printing demo, okay? 
So, the printer is starting to whir here now. So the, the laptop has sent the file to the printer. And this is the bit where I always get a little nervous because things can go wrong, but if you've done what you're supposed to do, nothing will go wrong that will be your fault. So, here we go. Okay, so the print is emerging from the printer and I think it looks really encouraging. This is the first time I've printed this image, incidentally. So I'm always a little excited to see the first print that I've made of an image. So you can probably hear I'm a little bit excited about this one. There's nothing like... Anybody who doesn't print out there, you have to understand, there is nothing like seeing your images emerge from a printer. It kind of reminds me of the old days when I did some darkroom stuff in university. Um, I joined the photo society when I was in university and the first time I saw prints appear in the dark room, you know, just see the print appear on the paper, it was like magic and this is the same. I still get that kind of excitement from it. There's nothing like printing your pictures. Everybody should print your pictures. Okay, so the moment of truth, um, from here it looks good, but it's upside down, so, oh no, the printer printed it upside down, so let's take a look. The lights I'm using for video here are daylight balanced, I always recommend, if you can see here, the sun has been going down while we've been filming, and... The light colors are changing, the ambient light is changing, and most artificial indoor light is quite yellow. Even the tungsten lamp here, you can see that. Okay, in the background. But even some daylight fluorescents, excuse me, and overhead lights are not daylight balanced. So you look at your print, and it does not give you an accurate reflection of the colors, okay? But when you look at them in daylight balanced lights, like the video lights I'm using here, it's much more accurate. And I can see that this print is absolutely perfect, and I really like it. This is Lilith, by the way. That Halloween shoot we did had a vampire queen in it. It had Lilith, and it had Callie. All using the fantastic model. Um, her model name is Foxy P. Cox, because her surname is Cox, and she's quite foxy. Um, and... She was absolutely fantastic and perfect for the role. She does a lot of uh, dancing and performing, so she's extremely good at the posing and positioning. And here's the print. Dun, dun, dun. In daylight. I'm filming this on the EOS R, by the way, and I can see that the eye detect is picking up the eye on the print even. So, I am extremely happy. So, I'll talk to you again soon. Looking forward to the next video. Bye-bye.